Hi, today's devotional is the second part in our series on the Trinity. Next week will be our third and final installment uh, of the series, and we'll look at the application of the Trinity um, to our lives. But today we're going to look at uh, two of the key historical documents that helped the early church try to define what Trinity means. Uh, as you may recall from last week's installment, there is no word in the Bible for Trinity. And therefore, it's been very difficult over the millennia to try to give a strict, tight definition. And so um, in the early church, uh, this was a doctrine that was very important because embedded in the essence of the Trinity is the idea that Jesus is God. And that was a contentious issue uh, in the early centuries of the church. The first document that really addressed the issue was the Nicene Creed, which was originally drafted in, in 325 AD. Let me just read to you part of the Nicene Creed so you can hear some of the words that were formulated back in the early part of the fourth century. Uh, many of you will be familiar with this, uh, but nonetheless it's important just to kind of see the Trinitarian uh, nature of this as it's applied to Jesus and the Holy Spirit, and God the Father for that matter. It reads, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father, before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made. Later on in the Creed, you get this about the Holy Spirit. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. So we get a, a very early formulation of the Nicene Creed that correlates God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit together, all being one. The language of this Nicene Creed was actually amended just slightly in 381 at the Council of Constantinople. That's the formal language when we think of the Nicene Creed. Um, that's the formal language, the source of the formal language in 381. There were a lot of debates about that, and in particular, the Nicene Creed and then later on the uh, Council of Constantinople were trying to defend themselves from a group called the Arianists. And the Arianists denied that Jesus was God, very much akin to the Jehovah's Witnesses of today. They believe that Jesus is like God, but not actually God. Well, about 100 years after um, the Nicene Creed, there was another discussion about the nature of Jesus' substance. Is he really always divine, or is he sometimes human, sometimes divine? How can he, how can he be both simultaneously? That issue was taken up um, at Chalcedon. So the Chalcedonian Statement, or the Chalcedonian Creed, addressed the nature of Jesus demonstrating that Jesus is both divine and human all the time. So let me read a little bit of the language from the Chalcedonian Creed. Following then the Holy Fathers, we all unanimously teach that our Lord Jesus Christ is to us one and the same Son, the self-same perfect in Godhead, the self-same perfect in manhood, truly God and truly man, the self-same of a rational soul and body co-essential with the Father according to the Godhead, the same self, uh, the same self-same, co-essential with us according to the manhood, like us in all things, sin apart, before the ages begotten of the Father as the Godhead, but in the last days the self-same, for us and for our salvation, born of the Virgin, as to the manhood, one and the same Christ, Son, Lord, only begotten. And the creed goes on from there, but basically reconfirms what we've just read here, that Jesus is fully God, fully divine, simultaneously. So the central idea is that Jesus is the same as God. He is God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are one and the same. And so it's, a, it's an essential marker for a true, authentic Christian. And it's been captured in these two documents and others over the years. But it's something that we must hold to to be authentic Christians. Thank you.